What's up guys, today I'll be showing you the three things to do in Rome. Commonly called the eternal city or Caput Mundi, that is the capital of the world, according to legend, ancient Rome was founded in April 21st, 753 BC by the twins Romulus and Remus and grew to be Western Europe's first superpower and draws millions of tourists from around the world who come to awe in the over two millennia of European art and architecture, from the Colosseum and the Pantheon to Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel and countless works by Caravaggio. There's simply too much to see in one visit. So do as the countless others have done before you toss a coin in the Trevi fountain and promise to return. This goes to say, Rome being one of the most iconic capitals of the world, seeing this beautiful city comes with a cost. But as someone who has lived in Rome for a few years now, I'll tip you on what to see in Rome for free. So here are the free things to do in Rome. Stick to the end for bonuses on how to visit paid for places for free. Number 1. Piazza Navona. Piazza Navona is built on the site of the Stadium of Domitian, which was commissioned around 80 AD by Emperor Domitian as a gift to the people of Rome. And in ancient times, in this space, there used to be gladiator fights, horse racing, and also early Christian martyrdoms took place, much like the Colosseum. Now how cool was that? Piazza Navona is definitely one of the most beautiful piazzas or squares in the whole of Rome and most certainly free to visit. There are three fountains on Piazza Navona. One is Fontana del Nettuno, that is the fountain of Neptune. Two, the Fontana del Moro, that is the Moor fountain. And the third is the iconic grand centerpiece, Fontana dei Quattro Fiumi, that is a fountain of four rivers designed by the famous Italian Baroque sculptor and architect Gian Lorenzo Bernini, the same guy who designed St. Peter's Square at the Vatican, here in Rome. This is definitely one of the most beautiful fountains in Rome. I did a video of the most beautiful fountains of Rome, link in the description. This fountain is special because it tells a story. This fountain of four rivers gets its name from the four river gods to represent four major rivers of the four continents through which the papal authority had spread back then in ancient times. And these rivers are the Nile, representing Africa, the Danube, representing Europe, the Ganges, representing Asia, and Rio de la Plata, representing the Americas. I did a full video of Piazza Navona with its history. You can check the link down below. Number two, the Pantheon. Now, folks, let's go to the Pantheon. The Pantheon is a former Roman temple and one of the best preserved of all ancient Roman buildings. The Pantheon, which is derived from the Greek words Pantheos, meaning temple dedicated to all gods, and this ancient temple was first built between 27 and 25 BC by Marcus Agrippa, who was a right hand man and son in law to the first Roman emperor, Emperor Augustus. And Marcus Agrippa's name is seen at the top. Unfortunately, it was destroyed by a fire in AD 80. Then the second temple was rebuilt by Emperor Domitian. Sadly, in AD 110, it was struck by lightning and burnt down. And the final structure that we now see today is a third temple built between AD 118 and AD 125 and was rebuilt by Emperor Hadrian. And since 609 AD, it's a Catholic church, the Basilica di Santa Maria ad Martyrs. So yeah, this temple is pretty old and completely free to visit. The Pantheon's dome inspired great masters like Filippo Brunelleschi, who used it as an inspiration for his cupola or dome in Florence. And also Michelangelo studied it before designing the dome of St. Peter's Basilica. I did a separate video of the tour inside the Pantheon link below in the description so when in Rome definitely pay this place a visit the architecture is just stunning number three Fontana di Trevi that is the Trevi fountain guys Rome's most famous fountain is the iconic baroque style Fontana di Trevi the Trevi fountain is probably the most famous free thing to do in Rome and when here be sure to throw in a coin always with your right hand over your left shoulder with your back facing the fountain as the legend says that if you throw a coin you will come back to rome the legend further adds that if you throw two coins you will fall in love 
then if you throw three coins always with your right hand of your left shoulder you will get married this i can attest to so yeah definitely a must feel place to visit in rome i also have a more detailed video on the history of trevi fountain from where it gets its waters who built it and why and just how many coins are collected and where they take the coins the video link should also pop up here number four saint peter's basilica now let's go to the smallest country in the world which is actually in rome the vatican city so crossing this barrier we have now entered the vatican state another free thing to do in rome is to visit saint peter's basilica my most favorite place in rome saint peter's basilica is one of the most beautiful and most breathtaking churches in the whole world and this is not a place to miss to visit when in rome St. Peter's Basilica is named after the first pope, that is, Peter, the Apostle of Christ, who was given the keys to heaven and whose statue is also inside, seated, and you can actually rub his foot, but because of COVID, this is now limited. Thanks God, because Peter's foot is fading thanks to all the rubbing by people. St. Peter's throne or chair is also inside St. Peter's Basilica and also the tomb of St. Peter's is right under this gorgeous baldacchino by Gian Lorenzo Bernini. Other famous statues to see inside St. Peter's Basilica is La Pieta by the famous Michelangelo. There's so much to just see inside St. Peter's Basilica and it's all for free. Up there is the dome of St. Peter's Basilica by Michelangelo. Michelangelo was so much inspired by the Pantheon that when he made his dome of St. Peter's Basilica 1.5 meters narrower in diameter than the Pantheon, the legend has it that he said, I could build one bigger but not more beautiful than that of the Pantheon. It was 71 years guys when he took this assignment. It's possible to climb up to the dome, though not for free, but definitely a must because the views of Rome from the top are amazing. I have a video with the tips in the description below. Number 5. Boca della Verita, that is the Mouth of Truth. Another free thing to do in Rome is visiting the Mouth of Truth. Legend has it that if you put your hand in the mouth and tell a lie, the boca will slam shut and bite it off. This mouth, which was originally part of a fountain or probably an ancient manhole cover, now lives in the portico of the Chiesa di Santa Maria in Cosmedin, a handsome medieval church, and inside this church is the flower crowned skull, a legend to belong to St. Valentine's. Yeah, the one saint that puts every man on earth in high pressure during valentine's day number six il vittoriano also known as altare della patria as you walk in one of rome's beautiful piazzas or squares there is no way missing this huge colossal mountain of white marble that towers over piazza venezia this gorgeous building is called il vittoriano aka altare della patria or altar of the fatherland Built at the turn of the 20th century to honor Italy's first king of unified Italy, Vittorio Emanuele II, his statue stands out. The first time I ever saw this, I was like, wow, these Italians are extra. Just look at the statues, the barriers. There's a story behind told on this building, and this beauty is free to visit. The history on this building goes deep. Something of a cup of tea will do. And one cool thing is that you can climb to this level and get an awesome view of basically the entire of Rome. And also chill, especially during the hot summer. Still free. But if you want an even more amazing view, you have to pay to climb the lifts up to the terrazza. Child, it's worth it. You even get maps to tell you what is what. 
when you are having the 360 panoramic view from Il Vitorian. The ticket to climb the lifts also gives you access to two other museums in Piazza Venezia. I did a full video of Il Vitoriano, check the link in the description. There's also a restaurant on this free accessible level where you can just sit, eat whilst gazing and owing to this beautiful city. Number 7. Scalinata della Trinità dei Monti, that is the Spanish Steps. Another famous and beautiful piazza or square is Piazza di Spagna, where you find the Scalinata della Trinità dei Monti, popularly called the Spanish Steps. And everything up these stairs to the church and the boat below are free to visit. Piazza di Spagna was named after the Spanish Embassy to the Holy See, right at the end of the piazza. This 135 steps, designed by the Italian Francesco de Sanctis, was built in 1725 and during spring, the azalea flowers are placed here making these steps romantic and picturesque while overlooking the French church up there, Chiesa della Trinità dei Monti, and at the foot of the steps is the fountain of a sinking boat, Fontana della Barcaccia, by Pietro Bernini and his most famous son, Gian Lorenzo Bernini. This fountain is fed by an aqueduct, the ancient Roman Aqua Virgo, same aqueduct that feeds the Trevi Fountain. I have a whole video on the history and myths and legends of everything on this Piazza di Spagna, link in description. Number 8. The Secret Keyhole The Eternal City is full of hidden gems and most tourists miss to see and one of them is this famous keyhole in Rome. Located on the Aventine Hill, one of Rome's quietest and nicest neighborhoods, a walk up to the keyhole is definitely worth it for your calories and whilst you also get to pass through beautiful rose gardens and orange grove with an amazing panoramic view and arriving at this secret keyhole at the Piazza dei Cavalieri di Malta, get your camera ready. Now, when you peep through this brass keyhole, you'll see a garden filled with arched hedges and birds chirping, and the dome of St. Peter's Basilica perfectly framed. You have to see this for yourself, my friend. I have a full video on the secret keyhole including things to see in this neighborhood and just how to get there. Link in the description. Number 9. Trastevere With its old world cobbled lanes, ivy clad facades and boho vibe, Trastevere, which means beyond the Tiber, is one of Rome's most vivacious and Roman neighborhoods. Walking through Trastevere's neighborhood to explore the winding cobblestone alleys is a charming experience, especially at night, when the streets come alive with crowds swarming, fashionable restaurants, cafes, and bars. You can also visit one of Rome's oldest churches, the Basilica di Santa Maria in Trastevere, and also worth visiting is Basilica di Santa Cecilia in Trastevere the last resting place of the patron saint of music and musicians, Saint Cecilia. As legend has it that as the musicians played at a wedding, Cecilia sang in her heart to the Lord. I leave a full walking video tour with captions on Trastevere neighborhood down on the description. Let me know your experience when you visit Trastevere. Number 10. Roman Forum In ancient times, a forum was a marketplace, a civic center and religious complex all rolled into one and the greatest of all was the Foro Romano that is the Roman Forum and it sits between the Capidolio that is the Capitoline Hill and the Palatino that is the Palatine Hill. 
ancient Rome's most exclusive neighborhood considering that the ancient city was founded on the Palatine by Romulus, the mythical founder of Rome, after he killed his twin, Remus, in a fit of anger, and subsequently was the home of aristocrats and emperors. Hence, to get the best panoramic views of the Roman Forum is from up here at the Capitoline Hill, and it's free to visit. The ruins you see today are impressive, but they can be confusing without a clear picture of what the forum once looked like. Hence, a map of the place will be helpful. But I'd highly recommend a tour guide. I think everything will make perfect sense. promised i'll give you a bonus on the paid for places that you can visit for free and that is by taking advantage of the free sundays rome has hundreds of wonderful museums and sites and these archaeological sites and museums are managed by several different entities some like the Colosseum, are run by the italian state others like the capitola museums are run by the city of rome and the Vatican museums are run by the Vatican, which is a separate state from Italy and obviously have their own rules. Generally, all year long, Italian state sites and monuments are free for everyone on the first Sunday of every month. This is true across Italy and includes other well-known sites like the Uffizi Gallery in Florence and Pompeii. Cool, isn't it? Hence, it's possible to visit the Colosseum, excluding the Colosseum Underground Tour, Castel Sant'Angelo, Galleria Borghese, that is the Borghese Gallery. This one you must book in advance, even though the tickets are free on the first Sunday, and you have to pay a two euro reservation fee. Hence, it's possible to visit the Colosseum, Castel Sant'Angelo, Galleria Borghese, that is the Borghese Gallery, the Roman Forum, the Baths of Caracalla, etc, etc. So if you google most of these sites, you'll get a guide to know if it's free. Please note that the free Sundays are pretty crowded and first come first serve, so try your best to beat the crowds early enough. Visiting the Vatican Museums is a thrilling and unforgettable experience. This vast museum complex boasts of one of the world's greatest art collections, the highlight being the Capella Sistina, that is the Sistine Chapel, whose ceiling was done by none other than the famous Michelangelo. It's not free to visit the Vatican Museum, but the last Sunday of each month, the museums are free, although very busy, so if you can beat the queues, good for you, or rather, good luck. I'd highly recommend visiting the Vatican Museums at least once or twice or thrice in your lifetime. I'm not even kidding about it. There you have it guys. These are my top 10 places that are free to visit in Rome. Even though there are other more but less known especially to tourists. But if you have more days visiting Rome and would like to know more non-touristic free places to visit in Rome, let me know in the comments below. Please like and subscribe if you haven't. Be sure to check my playlist on Rome and Italy in general. Adios! And in Italian we say arrivederci. That is goodbye and see you in the next video. Ciao ciao!